お前は一体何なんだ友達だ What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to another War of Divisions video here on Fort Misery Gaming. And today, guys,、uh, we're going to be going over the most optimal Nagarok that you will be wanting to use for your Ramza,、um, depending on what class you're going to be running. So, this is not a definitive, absolutely, this is the best weapon type, doesn't matter what build you run. This is completely dependent on what build you run. But, For my particular build and for the builds I've seen a lot of people universally. Now, you could be switching skills up, you could be switching classes up, things like that, depending on what you're investing in your job class. All sorts of factors take into place. For what mode you're doing, if you're, you know, this is for future content for、uh, raids or towers or PvE, or if it's more PvP, Guild War focused, it'll all have depending variables. But in my opinion, this is what I'm going to state for what I chose to build first for her plus five weapon. And why I choose to lean on that. So let's go over to the Nagarok first, and we're going to go over the three different classes of what weapons you can end up getting for your plus five. So, first of all, let's go and look at the max stats for a plus five. This is going to be for Assault. So, Assault is going to have 38 HP, 1 Accuracy, 2 Evasion, 162 Attack, and then 56 Magic. Now, I believe the Accuracy and the Evasion are always the same for the three classes. Let's go down and confirm that they are one and two. So, you know, optimally, you would like to have that one and two,、um, you know, done.、Um, on my current level 40 plus five, I have one and one. So I need to get one evasion. Hopefully, we get that roll. And the last one, I don't have to waste a hammer on that point. But,、um, but yeah, so there's that.、Uh, HP looks like it is. Oh, actually, so Vital actually will have you more HP. So Vital has more HP. Whereas magic and assault will have 38, which for the assault and magic, that's actually good. Because、um, you're going to get your HP stat more than likely from your TMR that you're going to use on Ramza, or like maybe Mont's TMR or Engelbert's TMR. Like another TMR for a tank tanker is because, like, honestly, this HP stat, you're not going to want 64 as your, as your optimal <laughs> HP stat for your weapon、uh, equipment. Because remember, we talked about that in one of our previous videos that you can only get one overall stat per gear. For whatever your highest stat is. So, you do not want the HP to be there. So, it is a little unfortunate that the Vital does get the HP,、um, but we'll talk about why overall I like Vital the best. But anyway, so that's the assault stats. So, there you guys go for that. Magic is g o i n g to give you 81 attack and 112 magic. Then we're g o i n g to go into Vital, which is g o i n g to give you 129 and then 89 magic. So, first of all, let's talk about assault. Assault is still very, very strong and it's probably. Overall, I would say it is the first or second best, depending on who you are and how you want to build Ramza. So, if you are purely going for, I would say, a ninja build,、um, maybe a double squire build where the magic stat is not as important, obviously, assault is going to be better. You have a higher chance of rolling into that full 162 attack.、Um, you only have a 38 total HP stat you can roll. So, your odds of getting an attack is higher, especially if you guys are rolling without a lot of seals. If you're like,、oh, I don't want to wait for seals, I just want to plus five this,、um, you know, you have a higher chance of rolling more attack stat in this build than any of the other builds because the HP stat is lower,、uh, the magic stat is lower,、um, you have so much attack stat to roll into, right? So, you'd have to get, if you want to be optimal, between 150, 152 attack stat roll by the time you get to level 50. So, That's the advantage of the assault, set, of the assault type.、Uh, if you go into the magic type, I honestly feel this is the weakest of it simply because it suffers so much and not even breaking 100 attack. And I feel while magic is super important, you don't need it to be 112、um, for it to be you know, super crucial for your build in Bronza, even if you're going on the Spellblade build, which a lot of people are, I myself included on that.、Um, You know, just not even hitting 100 attack on your weapon is going to hurt you a lot. So, I think where we first thought it was discussion in our Discord, and by the way, I'm getting a lot of my inside information and my opinion and my、uh, thought process through our, our boy, our, one of our sub leaders in our guild called Gale. Me and him spitball a lot of、uh, different builds and theory crafting, especially when it comes to PvP. So,、uh, shout out to him for、uh, also giving me some cool information on, on this whole video. But anyway, Uh, so, yeah, that's why I would, I would definitely say magic isn't the super optimal build. Now, you could use this on another future unit that is more magic driven,、um, even more so than Ramza down the line if they happen to be a sword wielder. So, it's not like 
it's garbage and you'll never be able to use it. If you want to build a second plus five, which we still definitely have time for, um, you could keep your magic, uh, you know, and then just uh, try to build, you know, get vital or assault for your next one. So, you know, either way is good. So next vital and why I like this the best is because it is a very good hybrid split between magic and attack. So you guys will see here, I'm going to compare this to the assault. So it does get more HP, which I don't like. I wish it, they all had the same HP, then probably these stats would be higher. Maybe this would have gone up to like 135 and like 95. But unfortunately, the HP stat is in there. But it has still almost 130 attack. So you're losing out on 33 attack from the assault type, but you're getting uh, 33 more magic. And I feel that's better overall um, because you're going to use a lot of magic skills as we'll go into Rom's kit and show you guys where having that extra 30 points in magic, I feel is going to be super important. Well, I was like, yeah, you're going to get 30 more points in attack, but also at the same coin, this is going to be easier to roll into because once you hit those attack stat rolls, you're not going to have the opportunity to even roll into attack anymore. So then you could possibly fill out that magic. Like for me, instance, I already basically hit my attack stat roll and maxed out at level 40, I already rolled into 123 attacks. So pretty much no matter what, when I level that up 10 more levels, even when me using 10 magic seals, I'm gonna max out that attack stat, right? And losing 30 attack is not gonna be as important, I feel, as as uh, missing out on 30 magic, just because you're gonna wanna use magic for a lot of skills. So if we go into Ramza here, um, and we go into, like, for instance, look at how his build is. He has 264 attack and then magic of 239. He's so, like, he's almost evenly split on that, right? So that's, like, you just from seeing his stat pool, um, where, like, you'll see a lot of characters that'll have, like, super high attack and then very, very low magic, like, under a 100 range. But the fact that he's almost even on both, it indicates of how your build is. You want him to be diverse. You don't want him to be a pure DPS monster, like a Sid or a Stern, where he's just all about attack. You want him to have, like, crazy, crazy high attack. You want him to be well-rounded. That's what his whole kit is based around, is he's a very well-rounded hybrid character. So... If we go into um, so if we go into here his squire build. Almost all these are going to be uh, attack stats, but keep in mind here um, deals heavy damage to the target, reduces attack and magic, uh, increases attack and magic for all allies. So him having a good rounded attack and magic stat with shout is going to be even more beneficial because him when he's doing that buff, um, not only calculating your other allies but himself is going to get that usefulness of having attack and magic stat increased. So then we go into the subcommands here for Ramza. Here for the subcommands for uh, Squire. You guys see here there isn't really any attacks. These are all buffs. So there you guys go for that. So that's Squire subcommands and support reaction skills. And then when we go into the spell blade. So here's the spell blade. Magic damage based on magic stat. Inflicts poison for three turns. Raises magic resistance. Deals small light damage, ma light magic damage to the target, and extra damage against dark types. So Vanish Blade is very, very good for dark types. Uh, then you guys have the Shiga Blade. Deals heavy light magic damage to units within area, and deals extra damage to dark magic. So this is an AoE large damage with magic stat, and deals extra to dark damage. Very, very good. And then this, once again, another magic stat damage. Taunting Spell deals small, small damage based on Catcher's magic stat, and increases the chance of being targeted for three turns. So if you're running that with like another tank, that just even saves more like your Sid or your Frederica or your Stern or even your Catone from being targeted. So once again, I, the only time I would feel where you're like, if you're going to run Spellblade at all, the magic stat is insanely important because the attack stat is not calculated for any of these skills. And look at how you have three different, actually no, four, you know, so three different big damage skills. And the fact that you do have a large damage skill on Besiga Blade is super important to calculate your magic stat as being, you know, you want that to be pretty high. You don't want it to be like completely neglected and say it only gets into like, you know, like 350 or something like that. You want it to be well rounded with your attack stat. So that's why overall I feel it's important. Now, if you're gonna go uh, the ninja class, you could go, you know, a shuriken build. Uh, with Doton, very similar to the build that we have for Stern. I think this is like the exact same moves that Stern has for Ninja Class, if I'm not mistaken. But at any rate, you know, you can. 
I just don't recommend it because you're not going to see the damage, the burst damage that you will on Stern. You're not going to see the overall uh, super damage over time, uh, the sustainability that someone like a Sid has. So that's not what Ramza's role is. So people that think Ramza is a powerhouse DPS, that is not his role. His role is to be a jack of all trades. He's going to buff. He's going to give you utility. He's going to give you defense. He's going to give you magic resistance. And he's going to deal out magic and normal damage. So as we kind of went over his kit, that's what his role is. And that's why I feel when we go back to Nagnarok that I prefer the vital over everything. Now, granted, if you guys end up getting the Assault Blade at plus five, and you don't have enough resources and you really need to focus on your JP leveling up and you're not gonna really have resources to just continuously farm the EX stage for those recipes and the attack books. I totally get sticking with Assault and depending if you guys do wanna go Ninja or if you do wanna go Double Squire, then maybe you do wanna favor the Assault Blade. So I get both, um, but I just wanna say this is the advantage and disadvantages of both. This is what I personally chose on. I love the Spellblade build, um, and I feel the Vital Sword is the best for the Spellblade build. So I will, uh, when I do my count, my uh, my 60 day count review, um, you know, in a couple weeks, again, when we kind of update you guys where I'm at, I'll show you what my plus five Vital looks like at the end of it. Um, but yeah, that's what I would go for. Now, granted, if you guys are planning to use Nagnarok on other units, if you think Ramza will rotate out of your party, like if you want to put this on an Engelbert, uh, something like that down the road, then yeah, Assault is definitely best for Engelbert. You don't want to have Magic and you don't want to have Vital for Engelbert just because Engelbert only uses the attack stat um, for the majority of his skills. So, and the, like I said, the HP is not really relevant. So you want to try and not get HP rolls if you can. But as long as you do max out or get close to maxing out that attack and magic stat on the vital, then you're fine. And like I said, I think the assault, it's really easy to get that high magic because you don't have a lot of magic to roll into. You don't have a lot of HP. And obviously the accuracy and evasion is the same to roll into. So that's going to be the video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you guys think is the best blade for Ramza? Or what do you think is the best Nagnarok Blade overall? I would say best Blade overall is probably Assault for general for that sword class. But for Ramza specifically, which is what I build my Nagnarok for, I do like Vital the best. So feel free to, to tell me I'm wrong in the comment section down below. If you want to say I'm right, cool. Uh, you know, I'll take either way of criticism or feedback from you guys. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure you guys drop a like down below. Hit subscribe if you guys are new. And ring that bell for future notifications so you guys are notified when we post videos, go live, all that cool YouTube stuff. Thank you guys once again for helping us out reach 4,000 subscribers. Uh, really means a lot to me and Spoot. It's been a long road for us. Uh, we finally are, you know, finding this game that really is... Seems you guys to enjoy our content, so we appreciate that so much. Have an awesome Mother's Day weekend, guys. Make sure you guys get your mom some flowers, gift cards, whatever you guys do, and spend some time with her on Sunday. And thank you guys so much for watching once again, and we'll see you all in the next War of the Visions video. Have a great day, guys. Peace out.